Can we become addicted to food? Well, the short answer to that is we are addicted to food. That's what our genetics say. Our genetics already dictate that we're supposed to be addicted to food. The reason we get addicted to drugs is because we have all the machinery in place to be addicted to food. And there's a couple kinds of addictions to food, just like there are addictions to drugs. So let's use a couple common mood altering substances that cause us to have addictions. Let's look at heroin, for example. Heroin is a narcotic, an opiate, and it's used in medicine as a painkiller, and it's used by people using recreational drugs to get high, but also what will happen after you start to get high for a while is if you don't get high, then you'll feel bad, and you need to get high or you'll feel really, really bad. And the word for opiates is orphans, like endorphins, like a runner's high. So a lot of times I tease my running friends, I'm not a big long distance runner. And I say, well, you never get a, a runner's high in anticipation of runner. So running. So you only get a runner's high because that's the endorphins in your body that a kick in because you're in so much pain. So your body gets addicted to that, that, that kick of endorphins and you're willing to put yourself in pain to be able to get high. But that's not the only way to get high. Um, the endorphins mean these opiates that are made inside your body and they stimulate your brain on something called receptors. Well, the wheat that we eat now, which is a really, really common, the most commonly consumed grain for humans, is been hybridized and changed so much in the last 40 years. And it has a substance in it called exomorphins, which just mean it's like an endorphin, except for endorphin means inside your body, and exorphin means outside your body. So yes, it's true. There's like heroin in your hoagie because it is filled with these opiate-like qualities that make you feel withdrawal and pain and craving when you don't eat your wheat products. So if you eat, um, if you eat these things like bagels or donuts and pasta, they have these exorphins in them and everybody's a little bit different. Some people are a lot more sensitive than others, but we know that there's a lot more drugs in the, in the wheat right now. So you will feel withdrawal symptoms if you don't eat your wheat. So this is an example of being actually addicted to food. Now, another example of being addicted to food, let's take uh, not so much the physical addiction of withdrawal, but the anticipatory addiction that goes along with a drug like cocaine. Now, cocaine stimulates an area of your brain that makes a chemical called dopamine. And dopamine is a really like awesome, great, excited, happy feeling. And we do a lot of things for the dopamine. You do it for that great, happy feeling like that. And what happens when food like sugar, which gives us a big dopamine hit, we will start thinking about it and anticipating how great it will be once we have it. And this has been known for a long time. My favorite philosopher actually, Winnie the Pooh, really described this perfectly because he said, the best thing in the whole world is honey. And then he thought about it for a second and then he said, well, actually the really best thing in the world is that second that you have right before you eat the honey. And what he's really describing is that feeling that dopamine gives you to get you really excited about it. And that is an extremely addictive, it, it, that's extremely addictive. And it's, and we have these in our brain because we would have needed to need a little boost to our morale to go out and find food and prepare it when we were tired or wet or cold. And now we don't have any of those things. Food is like in our mouth before we think of it. So we basically do nothing except for sit around in a shooting gallery, so to speak, addictive wise, because we can get the food as soon as we think about it. And the food really hits on these same receptors that the drugs do because we are wired like that as human beings because our brains need a constant supply of energy so we always need to be scouring our environment for 
Is there something good to eat, something that will give us fuel for the future to help protect us in case there isn't food tomorrow? So those are built in and they've meant that we've survived and we've been around as humans for millions of years on the planet Earth and we wouldn't have survived without this really, really strong desire to seek out and eat food.